The next part of our project is to put together the wheel that we took apart to check how everything was inside it. And so we're going to do that today. <laughs> you can tell who the parents are. <laughs> what we're going to do first in this project is put the tube in. We're simply now putting uh, baby powder on the tube and inside the wheel so that it does not stick anywhere or get hung up on anything as we put it, put it back together. As you can see, it gets simply stuffed inside. We then stood the tire up and we're now going to fill the tube so that it sits in the proper place and stays there while we put the hub together. Now that the tube is almost in place, and there it is in place, we'll be able to now start uh, getting ready to put the hub or the hub halves back in and uh, get them in place so that we can tight bolt everything back together. A little bit of cleanup and we'll be ready to go. We're using dish soap to lubricate the uh, bead on the tire and uh, we'll put some on the rim as well so that they slide together without getting stuck and it just makes it all go together a little easier. We have one side of the hub in here and we're about to put the second one in. It's now sitting in place and we will have to very carefully tip it over in a moment here so that we can uh, start putting the bolts back in. Now that we have the bolts in, we can start to tighten everything up and the uh, five bolts will hold the uh, rim together. Doing the final tightening on the bolts here so that this would not come apart again. And now putting the lock plates in and filling the uh, tire to the required pressure. We then took the tire and dropped it back into the stand and after several attempts of trying to put the axle in, decided the best thing we could do is pull the bearings back out. Yeah. And then we will uh, start to reassemble again from there. Simply unscrewing the cap that holds the bearing in place. And then uh, finding the ends of the snap ring. that holds the bearing into the hub. And the man's got her. Not on there. We started one of the bearings onto the axle and tapped it down some so that it would be in approximately the right place where it needs to be once the wheel is assembled. And now we're going to slide the axle back into place. There it is in place and putting the retainer in there so that it will not come out again. Putting the second bearing in place on the other side. Doing it this way, it goes together very easily. We can tap it into where it belongs and then lock the two bearings into place. And we're now ready to put the brakes back in. Brakes simply slide in and then the retaining clamps go on the outside which hold the brakes into the brake drum when the wheel is under the aircraft. Getting the axle centered so that it's in the right spot and put the second brake drum or the second set of brakes in. <laughs> simply a repeat of the other side. When we started taking the wheels apart and uh, looking to make sure that they were all still functioning, our intent had been to put the wheels underneath the center section of the aircraft for display purposes. There has been a change in plan and we're not going to be doing that at this time because if we put them underneath now, we'll be tripping over them and banging into them as we're working under the aircraft. When I first built this frame, it was intended to be able to allow people to work from both sides of the frame. 
to do the riveting. And originally it was just going to be built, and in fact it was built, as just two simple rails. But then it was figured that maybe the, the frame might sag in the center, so I added in these, which are braces. Then I found that the, the pieces we put on the frame were in the way, so I had to adjust the frame by cutting out reliefs. To a As you can see, this stiffener has been uh, placed in position per the location on the original drawings, which had a, a single mounting hole to locate it. And I located it by means of these um, temporary rivets called clecos. So now each stiffener is located in the correct position and can be now match drilled through into the, into the bulkhead itself. This is uh, an inspection door which in, in, in the wartime days was used to open, open up and look into the bomb bay to see if there was a bomb still hung up, which would be rather unfortunate. So, but anyway, this bomb bay door now has to be attached here, like so, and then is, f is fastened in place by means of two twist screws. So that's the next step to do after riveting these uh, stiffeners in position. And there are matching stiffeners going the other way on the opposite side, which will... Now, as I mentioned, the stiffeners have to tie up with other stiffeners which are running in the opposite direction. The stiffeners on the front are going vertically in these various positions, but they have to link up with these stiffeners going across, which I have now done. It is very important because if you don't get those right, all the holes will not match on the other stiffeners. So now the next step is to literally rivet all these various pieces in position and um, so we found a set of old drawings which showed a front view of the three wooden hoops. Taking that drawing, I then figured out a scaling factor to import it into my CAD system at one to one, and then created a model. Uh, of each hoop based on the outside surface as viewed from the front of those uh, three wooden hoops, uh, which should get us close, but uh, the conversion factor, if it's off of just a tiny amount, we might not be an exact fit to the fuselage. To help with all this, we've set up a, a laser level and the idea is to level the fuselage so that any subsequent use of the laser up at the canopy level uh, we can trust that it's a horizontal but not just the fuselage. We also then wanted to set the port and starboard so that it was level in a lateral uh, sense as well. Uh, now, so we use the level and reversing the level is a good way because if there's any error in the level you'll see a slight change in the position of the bubble. Yep. So we, we did our lateral leveling and see yeah. it's a tiny bit off and it turned out yeah. so about 50 thou that? on the starboard side was a little bit low. So we decided to go uh, to the fore aft I can't do any better than that. Jacking up the starboard side at the, the front, we just added a 50 thou shim. And then try again with the level. And we went to the rear of the fuselage, and it's laterally level, and brought the tail end of the fuselage up such that our laser line is now horizontal along the longer arm. And that's what you see there. We thought we were missing one of the brackets uh, that mount the wooden hoops of all the pieces that we have in bins. So I'm inscribing here. So I've taken a profile off the fuselage 
near where the mount point is. It's a very gentle curve there. And now I'm bolting between two pieces of oak, piece of aluminum, and I will hammer form this flange so that it has that curved bend in it. It'll be a 90 degree bend, but it'll follow that contour, which will fit to the fuselage. In order to get a proper longitudinal line here that extends through to the wooden portion of the canopy frame, we needed to ensure that the steel portion was at the correct height. In order to do that, we started with mounting these sliding rails seen here and here, but most importantly here, to ensure that this rail will be at the proper height to carry on through. The idea of assembling some of these pieces at the front of the steel tubular canopy frame is that we know that the, the frame itself is now in its correct position um, because the wood frame will fall, uh, following it it has to align to the, uh, the forward portion, which is in the steel part. The flashing that was originally uh, installed in the aircraft, we believe, was mounted with the canopy positioned, and then the holes to rivet the flashing to the fuselage were drilled, and then rivets uh, to attach the canopy and the acrylic. The problem is the flashing is a little bit different on one side than the other as originally built. So we're having to do fine tuning on the size uh, and width of the hoops such that when the acrylic is added to the wooden hoops it will meet to the existing flashing position. We don't want to move the flashing position. That's uh, many holes that are already in the fuselage and the flashing. Every time we make any change in the foam core patterns, we just keep measuring to see that we're not going asymmetric. And it helps us too when we're just adding a little bit of um, chamfer or any cuts we do on the wood. We keep measuring from a known center point on a diagonal so that one side is staying at least close to the other side. Again, uh, so here we're just trimming the foam before we trim the wood, but again, trim the same amount each side so that we don't get off-center. Uh, So what we did in the model, we followed the outside profile per the drawings. But we could have added extra and not needed it. But in this case on the small hoop, we want a little bit more thickness. So much of this will get ground away when we do the chamfer. But we do want a little bit extra width where it fits into the mount brackets at the bottom end. That's something that you'll see right in here. This is what we've already laminated. There's a small little corner here that we want to have material for. That's what these guys will fill in with. So the laminations that we have done to date match that outside profile. But what we've got right here is this very leading corner of this parallelogram that we will form with the chamfer and we don't have enough wood to quite fill that in, so that's what those extra laminations will do. Most of it will get ground off, but you can see there's our center line. We want to add just this little triangle of wood for that chamfered edge. 
So as we mold these, we end up with a square profile, square cross section. Um, and ultimately when that chamfer gets added, we will turn it into a parallelogram uh, with the forward outside corner uh, being the sharpest uh, corner and requiring the, the most amount of wood. And that's where we're just going a little bit outside of what the drawings indicated. Um, we also add on the inside of the, uh, the hoop at the mount points a little bit of extra filler which is per the drawings and that just reinforces the wood right where the, uh, the two bolts attach the wood to the mounting brackets.